talk about the technology and organized stalking and how mind control technologies are used in conjunction with organized stalking to try and help other people. First, I'll touch on some basics and then I'll go over uh, in detail what I'm trying to discuss in case people don't look at my previous videos. Organized stalking is um, based on uh, the choice reference patterns of the victim. Uh, in order to understand organized stalking, the victim must therefore go back and look at a pattern of their previous choices, favorite, favorite bars, cafes, restaurants, modes of transportation, etc. Uh, once the victim understands uh, that technology is based on the choice reference patterns of the victim, then the victim must understand what it's comprised of. And organized stalking, while it's based on one thing, choice reference patterns, where the organized stalkers are placed at specific vantage points uh, based on those previous choices, it's actually comprised of two things. Organized stalking is comprised of situational scenarios and conversational scenarios, always designed to capture, based on events or topics that will capture the attention of the victim. The victim is not aware that he's being stalked, and organized stalking is ineffective. The big difference between organized stalking and surveillance. In surveillance, the government either doesn't want the victim to know or doesn't care if the victim knows, but with organized stalking, the victim must know they're being stalked or it's not effective. Um, they're using it to establish memory anchors, uh, memory reference points. Uh, it just happened with me out uh, at the trolley stop here at, uh, at, uh, at the mall. Um, you know, he, he got sat down next to me, stepped into my visual field, and then waited for me to commit, and then committed in the same direction that I was committing. I was waiting for him to commit. In other words, he needed to capture my attention and generate an emotional response. That's what I mean by memory anchors, okay? They have different tactics of doing this. Uh, it must be aggressive at regular intervals in order to keep the victim sensitized to the organized stalking. Um, but, uh, you know, it's done to generate memory anchors, to provoke the victim into memory anchors. And I'll explain what that is. What You have to understand first what verification is. Uh, verification is their ability to verify the responses of the victim are consistent. As each response is uh, identified, developed, and uh, remotely measured and uh, remotely measured and integrated back into RNM data. So basically what, they, what they've done is they've taken the brain of the victim. The CIA and DIA contractors have taken the brain wave signature of the victim. They've mapped the brain wave signature. They then take that digital brain wave imprint and they upload it back to their conscious computer, their exascale system. Okay, And then they remotely tie the victim to that conscious supercomputer for life by way of a bidirectional stream of uh, electromagnetic low frequency waves, photons, um, uh, called the information and injection feedback loop. Okay. Um, which th that supercomputer, by way of this bidirectional stream of energy, then uh, rem remotely uh, monitors uh, and, and manipulates all electromagnetic activity of the victim's brain until the day of the victim's untimely death, cold-blooded murder. They cannot allow witnesses to, to live, to exist. Trauma-based mind control victims cannot be allowed to walk away. They could become a loose cannon. They could come back in the future to testify against them, etc., etc., etc. They're simply not going to allow any of those possibilities to occur. The victims generally die from the physical effects of the torture and trauma. They're using fit, they're using torture and trauma to depattern the victim's brain, so it can be repatterned with this repatterned with this fabricated and falsified stream of electromagnetic low frequency waves, specifically tuned to the brainwave signature of the victim. Okay, so this is done. You know, it monitors and manipulates, measures, transmits all electromagnetic activity of the victim's brain, all the electromagnetic emission patterns associated with memory and thought. Um, back to the supercomputer by way of this bidirectional stream of energy. This is called transcranial, transcranial brain stimulation and, and, and is basically a, a brain to computer interface uh, used uh, by the Department of Defense and the CIA with other brain to computer interfaces, such as that used by the pilot of the F 35 stealth fighter. Uh, he, the pilot of the F 35 stealth fighter, does not control the plane, the weapon systems, communication, navigation, etc., of that stealth fighter. Uh, manually if he doesn't have to. Uh, while he can manually inject, he controls the, the stealth fighter, the F-35, and all of its systems with his brain waves. This is called a brain-to-computer interface. That's similar to what they're using on their victims. Um, and they're using two interfaces. The, one is the supercomputer, which is the brain-to-computer interface. The other is the neurochip, which is the, which is the electronic brain-to-brain -brain interface. Okay, so basically, in order but to understand, they must verify each response. They must, they must continually provoke the victim over and over again until they establish a pattern of emotional responses with the system once they establish these, 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 these emotional responses memory anchors okay then the system then turns around and begins to probe the victim 
using that specific memory anchor, that specific memory reference that was just generated, to determine a, a, uh, a set of responses, to determine if those responses are coherent, to establish a pattern. That's called verification. It's seeking to verify. Let me give you an example. The organized stalking that just took place outside, there was a confrontation, okay? Um, the organized stalking is, is, is done in sequence, timed in sequence with, with the remote neural attacks and severe agitation. It's high-tech entrapment, okay? But, um, you know, at that point, a memory anchor was, uh, was established. The system captured that memory anchor in real time, downloaded it. Now it's injecting supercomputers. Now, most of this is done by supercomputers. It's not done by people. Well, there are high mind teams involved, and they're responsible for these atrocities. But most of it, most of the torture and assassination is done by a supercomputer. So the system captured, any set of brainwaves can be captured, held, and listen, replay perpetually in the victim's brain. Well, that's what they're doing. They're replaying the same brainwave pattern, emission pattern, electromagnetic emission pattern, back into my brain over and over. You know, 15, 30 minutes later, you know, to establish a pattern. It's injecting it back into my subconscious over and over again. The system is designed to remotely capture random bits of the senses of the victim and then to fabricate stories, mental suggestions, injected back into the subconscious of the victim at regular intervals in order to establish a set of coherent responses, determine a coherent pattern. Okay, that's what's happening. The system, if, you, if, if the victim is able to interact and counter the ability of the operator to do that, okay, the hide my teams, okay, uh, then this, the, the operator will simply vary the routine in some other way. What routine? The verification routine, okay? They're constantly running a person. Every response of the victim, every single response, must be verified. It's not enough that they have the raw data or they think it's consistent. They must verify those responses are consistent before they can be downloaded and integrated back into RM data as they continue to build a cognitive model of the victim's brain in order to eventually achieve direct behavioral control over the victim. Okay? Because the technology is so sophisticated and advanced, people just simply can't come to believe that, that these atrocities are happening. That's called the Occam Razor Principle. They rely on the Occam Razor Principle in order to discredit their victims. The Occam Razor Principle basically holds that the more complicated the truth, the less the likelihood of belief by the ordinary person. Um, so uh, it basically means the Occam Razor Principle basically uh, establishes that the simplest answer is always the truth. The, uh, simplest explanation is always the best explanation. So in order to uh, discredit a person, one need only engage in a sufficiently complex scheme of harassment, and because the more complicated the truth, the less the likelihood of belief by the ordinary person, the complexity of their harassment itself will generally be enough to uh, cause most people to turn away in disbelief. That's called the Occam Razor Principle, and that's what they're relying on. Okay, That's what these tailored, tailored scripted mind games of organized talking are all about. Not just to constantly provoke the victim into emotional responses, which can be remotely measured and integrated back into RNM data, okay, but also to discredit the victim in ways which appear common, ordinary, and expected to the casual observer. That's how that's how the technology is designed to work. You know, the, the, but it, it's all dependent on verification. Without verification, there could be no mind control. Verification is a crucial, crucial, and it's basically established by getting the victim to repeat the same response over and over. Such as, for example, constant disruption and chaos in the victim's computer. So the victim is forced to try and counter the chaos and disruptions on the computer each day to try to function and survive. Well, you know, one attempt to counter, that's a response. But that's not enough. They've got to verify that response after you respond. So your attempt to counter must then be verified. So they continually provoke you over and continue the disruption and the chaos over and over until the victim is forced over and over to try and counter over and over to try to to uh, adjust in order to try to function and survive to overcome the chaos and the trauma that's verification the, the provoking of the victim into multiple responses not one multiple responses the one is the response the multiple responses after that is verification okay without the victim's response to their specific stimuli the verification process breaks apart and mind control fails, which is why they cannot allow the victim to engage in a, uh, ran, a pattern of random or chaotic uh, conversations and situations. It disrupts their technology. So they've got the victim boxed in. Everywhere the victim goes, he's boxed in inside of what's called a psychotronic concentration camp. It's basically a floating box of organized stalkers and surveillance teams, okay, which the hide my teams uh, manually inject in themselves into at regular intervals for the purposes of uh, training, research, and development, verification, etc., using line of sight and so forth, okay? But that's that's basically what it is. If you want to understand organized stalking, if you want to understand trauma-based mind control, 
uh, think of the Truman Show with Jim Carrey, that movie, okay, where the victim was, you know, living in a make-believe world. And when he found, finally, finally found out it was make-believe and tried to escape, they tried to stop him. And they kept him in a floating box, okay, boxed in, okay. And it's a combination of the Truman Show, uh, that movie, and The Exorcist, where they take neuroscience using satanic ritual abuse, stalking, harassment, torture, terror, trauma, violence, chaos. So it's called satanic ritual abuse. It's a combination of those two movies that may help the victim in the theater of your mind begin to understand what's happening and how it works. It's a combination of The Truman Show and The Exorcist. That's trauma-based mind control. They have married neuroscience to the occult. They have weaponized neuroscience. Okay? So they need to generate multiple response statistics, multiple responses, which they can then correlate into what are called response statistics, and then take those response statistics, and from those response, that statistical data, determine a coherent pattern of thought, which can then be remotely measured and integrated back into RNM data. So remote neural monitoring is their ability to remotely measure, image, measure, tra and transmit that data remotely by, by, via this bidirectional stream of energy called the information and injection feedback loop. Okay? This is why the, the organized stalkers are constantly provoking you, constantly forcing you to adjust away. You know, I, I, I didn't adjust away. I just knocked the guy back about 20 feet. But that's what they wanted me to do. That's what they wanted me to do. They wanted to provoke me. You know, they, they will simply not, they cannot allow the victim to ignore them. If the victim can ignore them, their technology will fail because it will, the cognitive model will, their building will erode. Okay? Uh, their technology will erode, I should say, okay? So, you know, they constantly must capture the victim's attention, must stalk the victim, must provoke the victim, and they, if, the victim, if the victim can ignore them, their technology will, will, will fail, but they will not allow the victim to ignore them. They will not allow it, okay? These tailored scripted mind games based on organized stalking, situational and conversational scenarios called street theater is how they achieve the cognitive model by constantly provoking the victim into re re uh, emotional responses which can be remotely measured and integrated back into RNM data. Okay, so the, once the, the, they have that statistical data, consistent statistics, which they were able to verify, they're consistent now, okay? They then take those previous choices of the victim, choice reference patterns, okay, those choice references, and they, of that memory anchor they just established with the organized stalking, and they, the RNM supercomputer begins to, me to inject that manually, but automated, active, it's all automated, active, and adaptive, okay? Uh, the supercomputer then begins to inject that previous choice reference, that previous memory anchor of the organized stalking that was based on your choice references, patterns of your choice references, okay, back into your subconscious at regular intervals in order to pitch you into some type of action or access sequence, in order to manipulate and control you. That, the, using uh, these memory references, the previous memory anchors and impulse injections, agitation, uh, basically... The system not only captures the memory anchor, the memory reference, it also captures the associated impulse the victim has with that memory reference. So severe agitation and 